I watched a really interesting documentary on YouTube yesterday, which I'm going to add as a link to the show notes here because I think you'll find it really interesting. Um, I've made some notes because as I was watching it, I was thinking of all these things that I wanted to say and I didn't want to record it last night when I was watching it. So the, the documentary is called Deticized, How Our Reliance on Credit Leads to Price Inflation. And it reminds me of another phrase, which I've heard over the years, which is that a thing is only worth what someone is willing to pay. Since, I mean, the documentary suggests that People have always bought things on tick. They have always had to, you know, put things into pawn and then come back to it and buy it out again when they've needed money. So, uh, and doorstep home loans have been a thing for many years as well. But we have really entered an era now where we have normalised debt and buying things um, on long-term um, finance to afford them and if you think about the phrase a thing is only worth what someone is willing to pay imagine that you need to buy a new car or you want to buy a new car imagine there were no finance options so you had to save to buy the car and then you went to look for the car and you had the option between a ten thousand pound car and a forty thousand pound car if you had to pay for it all up front, you would go for the £10,000 car, wouldn't you? But where you can now get financing options which allow you to buy the most ridiculously expensive car over an insanely long period of time, plus the interest, because of course, giving credit and, and getting people into debt has become a money-making industry. Because let's say you buy a car for £40,000 and let's say you get a credit agreement that lasts five years. You're not just paying off the item, you are paying the interest as well. And the interest is the profit margin that the bank or whoever the lender is that, gave, that lent you the money to buy it is making. So it has very much become an industry. Um, and people very often will re-upgrade their cars now every three years. <clears throat> so when I bought my car 12 years ago, I got it on HP, which is higher purchase. Now back then, there were some good deals around. And when I bought mine, it was interest free. It was literally the value of the car, which was, I think, worth about 10,000. And I paid it off over three years on a flexible arrangement so that if I wanted to pay it off early, I could, and I wouldn't incur any fees for that. And when I got to the end of the three years, I kept the car, because that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to change it. But when I entered that final third year, the number of calls I got from the dealership trying to get me to consider taking out a new HP for a new car, they kept calling me and kept calling me. And this is how they get you, that every three years they want you, or every five years, or whatever it is, even though you may have not paid off the previous car, they want you to upgrade it. Like, you need the newest car. You need to have an upgrade. You don't. Cars will last donkey's years if they're looked after properly. And I don't care what I drive so long as it goes. So I'm happy to stick to my car. But we have this mentality now that everything has to be new, everything has to be upgraded. The only way companies make money is by you not being happy with what you've got and constantly wanting to update it. It's why you see so many adverts for sofa companies. Like every year they're trying to get you to refresh your front room, buy a new sofa. And it's this constant idea that everything has to be new, that you can't keep anything for more than a couple of years because then it's old. Whereas if you've invested a lot of money in something like that, and, and particularly if you've got it on credit, why wouldn't you want to enjoy not having to pay it off for a while? Why are we perpetually paying things off? So I made some notes about this. If the only way to buy a car 
was to pay in full, would you replace it every th three years and would you be concerned about its £30,000 price tag? Um, because I think that you would. Now, I don't buy anything. Since I bought that car 12 years ago, I have never had anything um, that I've paid off. If I want something, I have to be able to afford it. If I can't afford it, I can't have it. It's as simple as that. And it's made me hyper aware of the price of things. So let's say I take my car in for its yearly service. I'm sitting there in the showroom waiting and I'm looking at the price of the new cars. And I'm not thinking, oh look, that's a 40,000 pound car. I could pay that off in five years. I'm thinking 40,000 pounds just for four wheels on the road. And it's the same with, like, furniture. I mean, all my furniture was second-hand in charity shop. I think I paid £200 for the furniture that's now in where I live because I went down to the British Heart Foundation and just bought it and they delivered it. And it's fine. It's seats I can sit on. It's uh, a chest of drawers I can put clothes in. Who cares what it looks like? I don't care. It's functional. It works. It's not broken. It's not knackered. It looks absolutely fine. So, I don't buy things on credit. I don't want credit. I don't like the idea of being in debt. It's scary. And I wouldn't get credit anyway for most things because, because of my work status, self-employed. I don't earn an awful lot. I don't have much of a credit history because I don't buy things on tick. And I don't buy things on credit. So I have no real history in that anyway. And because I don't have a mortgage, um, my rent payments don't count towards my credit history as a reliable paying person. So people look at my credit history. All they can see on there is my bank accounts. And all my bank accounts look like they're empty because I keep all my spare money in easy access savings and then move it across when I need it. So it looks like I perpetually have no money because the saving counts don't count. So <laughs> it's ridiculous. Credit cards and debit current accounts, they count on your credit score, but your savings accounts won't count. So you could have nothing in your bank accounts and have £60,000 in an easy access savings and it won't count. It's just the stupidest system. They gamified credit, uh, credit scores but they're pretty useless. So I have a really good credit rating, but I can't get credit for anything. The only reason I have two credit cards is because every so often the credit score companies, and I go with ClearScore, will give you preferential treatment. So I will only apply for a credit card if it's a guaranteed acceptance, because even if it's a 95% acceptance rate, I won't get, I won't get it. So the two that I've got were both guaranteed 100% acceptance, so I got them. And it's great just to have just to have them around. They were both six months free uh, when I first got them. So I could ramp up the bill for six months and not have to pay for anything. That means I kept all the money in my savings account and then I pay off my credit cards every month and I use them for day-to-day -day spending. So I have one card which has got quite a high limit on it and I think of that as an emergency card if something happened and I needed instant access to money and I didn't have access to my savings account for some reason, like I was away. And then the other card is uh, attached to John Lewis and I get rewards for every four pounds I spend. And they turn that into vouchers that I can spend in Waitrose. So, you know, th there, there are small benefits to it. So that's pretty good. It's small, but everything counts. And as I've shown with the way I earn my income, literally every penny counts. Anyway, so those are the two credit cards I have, but I pay them off every month. And the only reason I get those is because of the guaranteed acceptance. I don't get accepted for anything. I, you know, there are bank accounts like I can't get an account with HSBC. They won't touch me with a barge pole, even for a credit for a, a standard current account. I just don't have the the credit oomph, even though I have a good credit score. It's just a ridiculous system. It doesn't mean anything. Um, so I made some other notes here. Normalizing credit and debt for what used to be carefully considered once in a lifetime purchases means sellers can push the price up um, because a buyer's response is simply to accept more debt to get it. So the example of the £40,000 car, you would, in normal life, you would never pay up front for a £40,000 car. You couldn't even conceive of it. But you look at that £40,000 car and go, oh, I can pay it off over six, seven years. Um, it's only 200 and something a month. And you think that's okay. 
So you've normalised the fact that cars are now stupid amounts of money because you think, oh, well, I can pay for it anyway. And that allows retailers and sellers to push prices up because they know people will accept the prices because they'll just split it over a longer term. And this is the, the title, which is that, you know, credit has caused prices to go up because people are just more accepting. If everybody refused to buy a £40,000 car, the price of cars would come down because they wouldn't be able to sell them and they'd have to. We have allowed prices to go through the roof on everything because we just go, ah, oh, it's all right, I'll just stick it on the credit card. Oh, it's all right, I'll just pay for it over six years. So we have given them carte blanche to charge whatever they want. It's the same with houses. Prices are through the roof because people are willing to get themselves into debt for their entire lives for a mortgage on a property which isn't, cannot possibly be worth what the price tag is and we just accept it and we just accept a slap in the face that says yes yeah, it's going to it's going it's going to cost you so much money you'll never pay it off in your lifetime provided you get to keep your job but it's okay because you're paying it off over 25 years maybe even more uh, lifetime mortgages I'm sure they they'll just extend the mortgages because don't forget as well you're paying interest on that banks and mortgage lenders are making money out of you all the time you're not just paying for the property, you're paying for all the extra bits on top. So debt makes things more affordable in a very artificial way because it's getting you into debt. But debt's okay. Nobody cares about being in debt anymore. It's like, debt's fine. We're all in debt. We're all in debt now. And not being in debt is like this amazing superpower now. And... I know there are lots of people, because I know from the comments, there are lots of people who, who aren't in debt and refuse to take things out unless they can fully afford them. And that's one of the reasons why I've started my car fund, is so that at the point where my car has to go, because it dies or whatever, at the very least I can have a huge chunk of the value of whatever next car I buy in the bank. So... I'm planning ahead so that I don't have to get into debt for something that I don't want to get into debt for. And the worrying thing is that it's only credit and debt that is propping up the economy right now. So if everyone suddenly said, I'm not willing to buy things on credit, I'm only willing to pay things up front, and people stopped buying things unnecessarily, like you don't need to replace your car every three years. If we all stopped living on tick, the economy would crash because this is the only way businesses are making money. They make money on the fact that you will buy things and get into debt for it and that you are willing to keep buying new things that you don't need, like a new sofa a new, every couple of years, a new car every three to five years, um, moving home just because you want to rather than because you have no choice. And it's, keep, it's propping up the economy. So, as now where a lot of people are starting to rein back their spending and realising that actually I can't afford to upgrade my car just for the sake of it. I can't afford to move house, uh, whatever. Um, and we have a lot of economy problems now. So, I thought this documentary was um, really interesting. I mean... <sighs> Credit companies are making more money from the interest on the payments than they are from the products now. Uh, that's, that's how businesses, a lot of businesses are surviving. Credit score companies make money because uh, they're selling your data to, to other companies and shoving adverts in front of you. And it's just such a messed up system now. And being a part of that just makes me shudder. So I try my best. I mean... You can't escape all of it because the modern world doesn't allow you to. It's not like I live in the middle of a forest or an island somewhere. You know, unfortunately, I am tied to things like needing a roof over my head, having to buy stuff, but I only buy the stuff that I know I can afford to pay off. So I use my credit cards as normal spending. I haven't used a debit card in about three or four years. I can't even remember the last time. Um that I use any of my debit cards. I do everything on my credit cards. Um, 
and then just pay them off at the end of the month. So it's kind of like debit cards, but it isn't. Um, and it's just a habit I've got into. But everything gets paid off at the end of the month because I don't do out-of-pocket payments. And it's another reason why I always pay off my insurances in one payment because if you pay off in instalments, there's interest added. They're making money off the fact that you can't afford to buy insurance. So I always make sure that the money is there because I know when the insurances are coming up. You can stay out of debt if you rein back the difference between your wants and your needs and you rationalise the fact that it's only needs that you need. You don't have to keep buying new stuff. I know that all the advertising, all the retailers, everybody tells you that you need new stuff all the time that you're not good enough unless it's brand new, that you don't have enough debt in your life. But it's a lie. And we've turned spending into a hobby. We've turned it into a game. We've turned it into a dopamine hit. And it's really bad for us. And right now, and particularly in, you know, when everything crashed in 2020, it really exposed how fragile the system is. Um... So do watch the documentary. It's just over an hour long. It's incredibly interesting. Um, I love stuff like that. I love digging into those things. And it helps me understand my own motivations. Helps me keep, keeps me motivated um, to the plan that I'm on, which is not getting into debt, not having credit, and understanding why. So do watch it. Really, really interesting. Um, so links below. I'll also put it into the uh, the playlist that I have, which is for the subscribers, which is where I put all the, the docu documentaries and other YouTube videos I find that I think you might be interested in. So do have a look. Really, really interesting stuff. Fascinating.